afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Barometer Readings Monthly Conference Call. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. Following the presentation, we will conduct a question and answer session, at which time instructions will be provided. For operator assistance during the call, please press star zero. Thank you. I would now like to turn the meeting over to Nick Hamilton. Please go ahead, Mr. Hamilton. Great. Thanks, operator. Hi, everyone. Happy uh, September to you all. Uh, so welcome to the uh, regular Barometer Readings Monthly Conference Call. It's our regular forum to communi communicate our, our views to our top advisor teams that we work with. As you know, um, here at Barometer, we remain forever watchful of the markets as it pertains to uh, our breadth models, our observations regarding market leadership, and the actions that we're taking at the portfolio level. Uh, I really won't steal away too much from what Dave has to say, but on the whole, we continue to observe a market which uh, is resilient to a major correction, despite all the noise, and has considerable tailwinds such as falling inflation, rising PEs, and rising earnings. Uh, to paint a more complete picture, I will turn the call over to Dave. Great. Thanks, folks, uh, and thank you very much for taking the time today. I know everybody's very busy coming back in September and uh, certainly uh, probably for good reasons. <clears throat> um, as has been the case uh, over the last few months, uh, I guess the upshot is we continue to be quite bullish uh, for investor returns in equity markets, uh, and we're trying to take advantage of, of, uh, of what we consider to be pretty good markets. <clears throat> Headed into summer, there was lots of discussion about potential for a difficult market in the summer. Lots of people pointed out third, third quarter seasonality being the toughest quarter, um, that over the last 50 years, the average return was 1%, with half of the occasions being in the negative. Um, and one of the things that we pointed out, on top of the fact that breadth was expanding going into summer, that historically speaking, when leading economic indicators were improving going into the third quarter, in 88% of the cases, market had an average return of plus 5% or greater. Um, so here we are, September, headed toward the third week of the month, seasonally really the weakest month of the year, and today the S&P 500 hit new highs. So uh, what I want to do is talk about what we're seeing going on right now and why, why we think it's happening, <clears throat> specifically uh, where we are uh, positioning. I think that most of you know we really see it as our job to do two things. One, to find good ideas, and, and what we're looking for from an investment standpoint are things that are good getting better. Uh, but then to structure portfolios in parts of the market that people care about now that are participate um, if the market rallies tomorrow, we would hope that our positions participate in, in the market we're in right now. So just to start from a very high level, breadth on a global basis for equities continues to be broadly constructive. Um, there hasn't been a lot of movement in the key indicators. Europe has weakened a little bit over the summer. Uh, emerging markets improved a little over the summer. But the steady uh, demand really has been in North America and really specifically in the U.S. So uh, today, about 53% of stocks globally are in long-term positive price trends. For those that follow it, <coughs> you know, we continue to hold out that there isn't a significant bull market that came to an end before 70 or 80% of stocks were participating. Typically, by the end, it's a very broad-based rally and everybody's making money. The market we're in today is roughly at midfield. Breadth has been slowly expanding, but in general is, is, uh, is not overdone. So the question is, why is money rotating toward equities? Well, when we look at the alternatives, treasuries at 2.6% uh, and, and moving slightly higher uh, doesn't probably bode well for great bond market returns. When we look at corporate bonds, the high-yield market has the narrowest spreads in five years. It's, it's widened slightly over the last month, but really not getting paid well to take risk there. Investment-grade bonds continue to behave well relative to government debt, but with uh, two- and five-year yields moving a little higher, that seems to be a losing proposition. Uh, but when we look at the earnings yield on the average company versus the yield on a 10-year bond, 
the risk premium we get paid to buy equities is significant, close to two standard deviations above the long run average, <clears throat> which means that investors are still skeptical. They are not paying up. Somebody asked me recently, well, you know, money's been so easy, what makes you think we're not in a bubble in equities? And all you really have to do is take a look at the PEs of the top 50 stocks in the S&P in 2000, see that they were at 50 times earnings. Look at the PEs for next year at the top 50 stocks in the S&P at 15 times earnings. There's a broad difference between those two. Not only that, but in, in, the, in 2000, there were all kinds of outliers trading way above 50 times earnings. The distribution is very tight, and the S&P uh, valuations uh, are not out of whack. So then we look at earnings data. Is earnings data supportive? <clears throat> we know that uh, earnings revisions for the back half of the year have been moving higher as opposed to lower, which they have been over the last three years. And then when we look at the economic data, it really is almost a perfect world for us as investors in North America because you have improving industrial production in the U.S., improving empire manufacturing data, you've got improving housing data against a backdrop where in China you've got weakening electricity consumption, weakening industrial production, um, weakening housing markets. German business expectations have been backing off uh, and uh, real GDP has been backing off. So ultimately we have conditions where QE is taking place in Europe and for good reason because the numbers are weak. The numbers are weak coming from emerging markets. There is very little earnings growth in Asia or in Europe, yet interest rates are exceedingly low. So what, what does that mean? We're getting a very good, strong U.S. dollar, which historically is highly correlated to a bull market in stocks. Uh, and you've got, you've got um, uh, euros being sold, dollars being purchased, purchased to buy treasury bonds, holding long-term treasury yields relatively low. For a consumer, you've got low financing costs. You've got falling food and energy prices. Uh, we believe that energy breaking $93 last week on the, the West Texas crude probably points to a target in the low 80s. So falling energy prices are very supportive of consumer, and consumer free cash flow continues to grow. So. We like the fact that the growth in the U.S. economy is still muted, uh, but it is positive. And so we believe money will continue to flow into U.S. equity markets and specifically sectors that are benefiting in the, in the current market. Correlations, stock to stock and sector to sector, continue to fall, which means as a targeted manager who's targeting very specific leadership themes, we can add value above the, in, the index investor who's participating across all the index. There definitely are haves and have-nots, uh, and uh, we believe that we're sort of targeting, targeting the right spots. So <clears throat> we spent a lot of time over the last couple of months saying that secular bull markets are driven by two things, and ultimately it's a revaluation of the asset class versus the alternatives. Earnings growth is certainly one piece that we need to see, and we are seeing earnings growth in the U.S. and in Canada. The second piece that makes it a very resilient market is if you're getting price earnings multiple expansion at the same time. And we've made a lot over the last year about the fact that we are getting both and that it tends to be what happens in a, in a secular bull market. We're now in our third year of PE expansion since 2012. If you looked at what's happened in the S&P so far this year, uh, uh, multiple expansion accounts for roughly half the return in the S&P and earnings growth accounts for the other half of the S&P. So about 74, uh, 74 points of S&P gains have been, can be attributed to, to PE expansion. When you have both of those things happening, as our friends at Cornerstone point out, you tend to have quite resilient markets with very low volatility. We've now had nine 2 to 4 percent corrections since 2012. I think the reason it doesn't turn into 10 or 15 is that you've got underinvested investors uh, waiting for opportunities to buy dips. And as long as breadth is expanding, we're happy to be invested. 
So in our mandates, we are broadly focused on the equity asset class. The income strategy uh, is uh, virtually all equity focused currently. Uh, our focus here is dividend growers. Uh, we think that in an improving economic environment, their ability to pay is improving. We've got some very specific sector allocations where there are changes taking place that can lead to an improving ability to pay. And for the first time in a long time, energy infrastructure is not our largest weight. So energy infrastructure continues to do very well. Volumes continue to grow. The month of September, another record month for oil production and gas production in the U.S. The U.S. became the largest oil producer in the world in the month of April, and volume growth continues to work its way higher. So we want to participate in moving that from the ground to market and storing it and processing it. And the energy infrastructure companies all, for the most part, beat expectations in the most recent quarter. But our biggest changes, I would say, in the income portfolio over the course of the summer have been a significant increase in the allocation we've made toward financials, which would include asset managers, broker-dealers, both, both, both benefit in a strong market, insurance companies, banks, and, and non-bank financials, so non-traditional lenders. Uh, all of these companies are performing well and with, uh, with the rate backdrop uh, are benefiting. The other area that we've been increasing our exposure to is consumer discretionary um, and technology. And if we look at, look at the market, for instance, today, consumer discretionary, technology, semiconductors in particular, Financials, healthcare, all hit new highs. Um, so they're very quick to rebound and go on to make new highs. Uh, transportation stocks also make new highs. And you see industrial exposure in the portfolio, that's rails, and the rails are really benefiting in the current market. Um, I think that our key job here is to provide for stable cash flows in the portfolio and to try to grow them for clients who are looking for yield. Um, I think we're proud of the fact that last year, I think there was about 5.8% dividend growth in the S&P. The income portfolio generated a 10.8% growth in the dividends generated. So far, through the end of the month of August, the portfolio has generated a 15.8% increase in the dividends paid in the portfolio. So we are certainly getting our share of dividend increases. And in a world of 2.5% long-term bonds, 4% uh, cash flow with 15% growth is, is, I think, not so bad. So we're happy with how the income portfolio is going. We're set up well going into the fourth quarter, which seasonally is the strongest quarter of the year. Tactically, we think that hedge funds in general have underperformed the market significantly so far this year. Fade is the market strength in summer, held higher than average cash positions, and likely are going to be forced into a performance chase in the last three months of the year. So we think that there is some firepower that's going to get brought to bear, uh, and I think the market looks as though uh, it wants to go higher. If we were to look at the equity portfolio, equity portfolio less interest rate sensitive, sorry, less, less uh, yield sensitive, so our weightings are somewhat different. The equity fund largest weight would be technology at 25%. As I mentioned, semiconductors hitting a new high today. Semiconductors we look at as sort of the new copper they are in everything. They have a very short inventory cycle. When things slow down, semiconductor stocks tend to back off early. When things are accelerating or doing better, they tend to make new highs quickly. They're very quick to come back to highs. Energy is 21% of the portfolio, again, focused largely in energy infrastructure. As we've been talking about over the last two months, we took our producer exposure down dramatically through the summer as the breadth models backed off. And they do look, I think the producers do continue to look vulnerable. Healthcare is 15% of the portfolio. Consumer discretionary is 14% of the portfolio. And, and I think these are important because off the bottom of the bear market, 2009 and 10, uh, the two leading sectors since the beginning of this bull market have been financials and consumer. So headed into the summer, I think there was some concern that financials and consumer had been lagging. They've gone on to make new highs recently. 
relative strength new highs versus the rest of the sectors in the market. And in a bull market, leadership tends to be persistent, and leadership in these groups certainly is intact. So um, in both the key strategies, income portfolio and equity strategy, our sector weights in varying degrees are focused in technology, healthcare, consumer, financials, and energy infrastructure. All of these groups we think are set up well to perform through the, through the rest of the year. Um, the alternatives, fixed income, we don't think look very attractive. Uh, high yield, investment grade, or sovereign debt. Um, so we are fairly concentrated specifically in the equity asset class. Um, with that, happy to open it up to questions. Operator, any questions? At this time, I would like to remind everyone 